they end up killing Aki, I'm not watching the show anymore. So we start off this episode with Aki going down to a dungeon where all the devils are kept. Why are they keeping all these devils down here? I don't know. I mean, they do end up having power and Denji, obviously devils. So they do have a habit of harboring devils. Aki is brought here after losing the fox devil. He gets the future devil assigned to him who looks and acts very weirdly. And that goes for even Chainsaw Man's standard. The future devil requires a very high price. The last two users gave up half their lifespan and their seeing, smelling, and hearing ability. So the future devil tells Aki to put his head in his stomach so that he could see his future. And the only price Aki has to pay is for the future devil to let him stay in his right eye. Because Aki's death will be so prolific that he wants to see a front row seat to it. Now imagine this guys, you lost the fox devil, you lost your friends, you have two years left on your life, and you're doing all this to revenge your family who was killed by the gun devil. So pretty much everything you've done is to get back at devils just for a devil to tell you that he wants to sit in your right eye to watch your death up close and personal. Me personally, I would kick ankle, put his head. But seriously, on a serious note, Aki has to be really hurt right now because he just found out from the future devil, who knows if he's lying or not, that he's going to have a cruel death at the end of this. Doesn't matter if he succeeds or when, everything about Aki is just cruel and miserable. And I really feel for the guy. Back to Denji and Power. They continued their daily life of being killed by Kishibe. And they have gotten quite better at fighting. And unlike My Hero Academia, it didn't take a whole season of training. I'm talking about you, Deku. I'm talking about you. They also received their next mission, and that is to kill the killers of Himino, the Katana Devil and Snake Girl. If they fail, they will be killed themselves. Denji goes on to say that if he ever has to fight Kishibe to the death, he wouldn't actually kill him because he helped him get more power to impress Makima. And I'll know this is like a goofy comment. This also shows the growth for Denji. Guys, remember this, Denji is 16, okay? He's someone that was not growing up around people. He lost everything. And on top of that, he had to give everything he earned to people who he didn't even know. The only person that he knew killed himself. The only thing he ever Ever cared about was Pochita. And if you guys remember, that's the only thing he really genuinely gave feelings about, as we see. But we slowly start to see Denji coming back to that self, even with comments like this that I wouldn't kill Kishibe, even though it's like, dude, are you serious? But like, not killing him obviously is showing growth in his character development. And it's very good. Very good, Denji. But apparently he isn't the only one growing. We turn to Kishibe, who says he doesn't care if Denji and Power die, but it would suck because he would actually end up drinking more. Basically, meaning that he does care. He just doesn't want to admit it. Turns out that he is an alcoholic because one of his students died and he kept drinking more and more. But we find out that wasn't the reason why he and Makima met though. The meeting in itself was intense. Kishibe knows that Makima knew about the attack on the devil hunters and she just let it happen. But he doesn't care as long as she is one of the humans or at least on the human side. I'm telling you guys, Makima's up to something. He also stresses that even he is unsure what side Makima is on. Makima has been acting really suspicious and neither denies anything nor really says anything true to Kishibe. Even though Kishibe calls her on her bullshit. I will say this, Makima definitely has a plan here, guys. Whatever it is, obviously it involves Denji and power. I think Aki is just being tagged along. But in the same sense, it has a real like Gojo effect. If you guys remember the second episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, or maybe even the first one actually, he told him he was like, yo, I'll kill you if I need to. Talking about Itadori. Maybe Makima has a similar effect where she's basically saying like, listen, I'm on your side, but I'm kind of more on the side of just like, I want to save humanity or maybe I just want to save people. I don't really care about the devil hunters and the devils. I'm more on the side of just saving people. I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comments though. You guys think Makima is up to something? Is she evil? Is she good? What do you guys think? After that, Makima goes on to meet with the Akuza, whose people helped the Sabatari, the snake girl. They say it isn't their doing though. And she recruited them and made them do a deal with the gun devil for paying 2,000 for guns and ammo. Makima wants all the names of those men, but the Yakuza refused to give the names of the people of the other clans as they would provoke an all-out war. They refuse and Makima calmly grabs a paper bag and puts it on the table. Turns out it was the eyeballs of the Yakuza family She's fucking badass. So in true fashion of Makima, she gets what she wants. What are you guys doing? If Makima shows up to your door with the eyeballs of your family, I'm personally giving her all the information. Skipping to the day they're going to face the Katana Devil, we are introduced to the Special Force Team 4, the Shark Devil. He looks like a shark and can transform into a shark. Very, very unique, guys. I don't know what you guys think. The Violence Devil, who is the name suggests pretty violent. The Spider Devil, who is most of the time in her human form and then surprises her enemy with her giant spider form. The Angel Devil, crazy name, I know, guys, crazy name. If you touch the angel devil, your life will be shortened. Now, I want to say this, guys. Out of these right here, my favorite right now is the angel devil. I mean, he looks pretty sick, guys. I don't know why 
he's holding this guy's head right here, but he's holding the guy's head. Um, the shark devil, uh, I did get spoiled. I'm not gonna spoil you guys, but I did get spoiled about him. And the spider devil can honestly go to hell. Like, what the hell? Who created that? They all went to the basement of the building to fight off the zombie army of the enemy together with our main squad, Dingy, Aki, and Power, and Kobini. Aki runs upstairs to reach the leaders and does not beat up some people on the way, but most of the people in his way drop dead. As we see, that's Makima who is killing them off probably miles away. So Aki just walks through and there is Saratari, the person who killed Himeno. Without losing any words, she summons the devil, but this time, it isn't the snake devil, but the ghost devil, the one that Himeno used. She can do that because her devil can keep the ghost devil inside of his mouth. It's very paused, but you know. Aki starts fighting the ghost devil and is doing way better than last time. Because of the future devil's Aki's right eye, he can see a couple seconds into the future, and that's really helping him. Even with that, he gets overwhelmed, and the ghost devil is choking him to death, and he is in a dire situation. And that's where we leave off the episode, guys. Who are these new devils? Is Aki going to survive? I want theories in the comments, guys. Put them now. What's gonna happen in episode 12? Either way, if you guys are satisfied with the video, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Plenty of room in the dojo. Hey guys, we love you guys so much. Thank you guys. We're almost at 5K. Anime Dojo, and we're out.